Hey, what's up guys? I'm Brad from Fix This, Build That. And today, I'm going to show you how to take a little bit of wood and some drawer slides and turn a regular old kitchen cabinet into a pull-out trash and recycling bin center. Stay tuned, I'll show you exactly how to do it. We've been using a roll-out drawer of a base cabinet to store our trash and recycling bins in our kitchen. It takes multiple movements and you have to actually use your foot or pull on the trash can to slide them out. We wanted something easier and cleaner, so I thought this would be a great DIY project. I started by taking the innards of the cabinet out and removing the door. My first thought was to have a hanging version with slides attached high up in the cabinet. I got some 22 inch side mount drawer slides from Rockler, but these would attach right to the cabinet sides. And since my sides have a face frame, I'd need to shim them out so that they can clear the face frame of the cabinet. The problem here is that the sides of my cabinet are only a half inch, and if I mounted a cleat, I could blow through the left side of the exterior of the cabinet. So instead, I made some L-shaped cleats to attach to the base of the cabinet. I ripped a 1x6 into two pieces for the uprights, and then used a plywood offcut for the base. I just cut it to the length of the sides, and then I ripped it into two pieces. This whole build was done with materials that I had on hand, and you can use 1x4s or plywood for either of these parts. I assembled the cleats with pocket screws and glue, making sure that they were a consistent 90 degrees to each other. I took the cleats inside, and then I drilled quarter inch mounting holes in each one. I lined up a framing square with the front and the inside edge of the face frame, and then I referenced the cleat to the square. I pre-drilled the holes, and then I attached the cleats with pocket screws. The oversized holes here in the cleats leaves a little room for adjustments if needed. I repeated the same process on the other side of the cabinet, and then I used a scrap of plywood cut to 18 inches, and I slid it down the length of the cleat to make sure that they were evenly spaced. After a few minor adjustments, the cleats were done. Next, I moved on to making the drawer box that will hold the cans. I used 3 quarter inch plywood for the drawers and I ripped 4 pieces to size for the front, back and sides. I took the parts to the miter saw and I cut 2 long sides to 22 inches. To get the exact width for the front and the back pieces, I set the stop block to the width between those cleats that were in the cabinet, minus an inch for the drawer slides. Then I put 2 pieces of the plywood up against the stop block and made those cuts for the front and back. This is an easy way to account for the plywood thickness without having to do any math. I set the table saw blade to 3 eighths of an inch high to cut grooves for a quarter inch bottom panel. I made one pass on each board which gave me an eighth of an inch groove. Then I moved the fence over and ran a test board to get the right fit for the quarter inch plywood thickness. After tuning in the cut, I ran the sides and the front through at this setting. For the back piece I kept the same fence setting, but I raised the blade up and made a through cut on the board. I'll show you why I did this in just a minute. The last thing I did before assembly was drill pocket holes on the outside of the front and the back pieces. I've got all my parts here for the garbage bin, but this is a great way to assemble any type of drawer. So I just want to show you how this all goes together with the pocket hole joints. It's also got a captured bottom, so it's got a groove for a quarter inch plywood bottom, and you can use this for any type of drawer construction. To assemble the drawers, I started with the sides and the front, and I turned the pieces upside down. I squared up the parts, and then I clamped them together and attached the front to the sides with pocket hole screws. Then I put the shorter drawer back in place and attached it as well. The back of the drawer stops right where the groove in the side starts. This lets me cut the bottom panel after assembly and size it to fit the drawer. Before final assembly, I applied some finish of water-based polyurethane to the bottom panel as well as the inside and outside of the drawer. I did one flood coat and then I did two more coats after that. When the parts were dry, I slid the bottom panel into place in the drawer grooves and then I pre-drilled and attached the panel to the back rail with some pan head screws. All right, I got that plywood bottom in here. This back where the pocket holes is gonna be covered because it's gonna be the back of the drawer and the front of the drawer, the pocket holes are here. So that will be covered by the front of the cabinet when I'm done. Quick and easy way to make a drawer and put a bottom in. You can use that for any project. So let's get back to it. I'm gonna grab the trash cans, put them in here and then size up for the face frame on the top of this. With the trash cans in place, I laid some one by threes along the top edge of the drawer and between the cans to mock up the spacing. You want to make sure that you factor in the narrower base of the cans versus the wider mouth when you cut the frame parts. Instead of using the pine 1x3s, I decided to go with maple hardwood for the face frames because they're going to have better long term wear. I cut the pieces to width on the table saw and then I cut the long rails to size on the miter saw. I set the rails in place and then I marked the width for the end and the center dividers and then I cut them to final size back at the miter saw. I drilled pocket holes on the ends of the dividers and then I laid out all my face frame parts for assembly. I started by attaching the dividers to one side, clamping the pieces together and attaching them with pocket screws. Then I worked my way around, making sure everything was square along the way. 
I didn't want any fastener showing on the face frame, so I just glued it and clamped it in place on the drawer. After the glue was dry, I came back and flushed up the edges with my block plane, making sure to properly document the shavings coming off my hand plane. The last piece the drawer box needed was the vertical supports to attach the cabinet door. I used maple again for these and I cut two wide supports and a filler strip to go in between them. I cut the supports to length and then I took them over to the drawer box and attached them with two screws, pre-drilling and countersinking for each screw. Then I added the filler strip between the supports using the same method. With the drawer box complete, I sanded everything to 220 grit and I rounded over any sharp edges. Then I applied more of the water-based poly to all the maple parts that I just installed. Now it's time to deal with the cabinet door. I removed the hinges and the pull from the door and I was left with these mounting holes here on the front that I had to deal with. I decided to enlarge the holes with a Forstner bit and plug them with a cherry dowel. I drilled a hole in a quarter inch plywood scrap and I used it to guide the Forstner bit. If you don't do this, the bit will wander and it's going to give you jagged edges since the center spur doesn't have anything to dig into. I found a piece of cherry for the plugs that looks similar to the door with the finish on it and I took it over to the drill press to cut the plugs. I used a 3 8 of an inch plug cutter and I cut several plugs from the board in case I needed more for backup. I hammered the plugs in with a small finish hammer until they bottomed out and then I came back with a chisel and I pared them down until they were flush. After a light sanding I applied some finish to the plugs and you can see here that the plugs aren't nearly as dark as the surrounding wood and that's because as I pared them down I exposed new wood. They're going to darken up over time and eventually they're going to blend in much better. But I'm also going to flip the door vertically to help hide the repair. I moved back inside for the final install and I started by mounting the drawer slides. I used a 3 quarter inch spacer to raise the slides off of the cleats and then I secured them with the included screws. To install the drawer box I put down quarter inch spacers to keep the drawer from dragging on the bottom and it pushed the box all the way in. Then I pulled the drawer and the slide arm out just a little bit to expose the mounting holes. I lined the slide up against the vertical support and then I pre-drilled and screwed the slide to the drawer. I pulled the drawer out a little more, attached a screw, and then I did the same thing one more time. I repeated this process over on the other side, working my way down the slide. To attach the screws to the back of the drawer slides, I used the release levers and pulled the drawer out, and then I installed the screws on the back of both sides. Next I put the drawer back into place, and I locked in the slides and gave it a few test pulls. To install the cabinet door to the pull-out drawer, I clamped the door in place to see where the rails overlap the vertical supports. I marked a couple holes on each of the supports and then I drilled quarter inch mounting holes. I clamped the door in place again and then I used a level to position it so that it was in line with the drawer above it and then the door to the right of it. I pre-drilled the holes and then attached the door with panhead screws. The last piece of the build was to relocate the drawer pole to the top of the door. I marked the center line of the door on the top of the frame and then I used this Rockler drawer pull drilling guide to make indents 3 inches apart from each other on the center of the top rail to match my pulls. That automatic center punch is really sweet. It makes a conical indent and it keeps the drill bit from wandering when you drill through it. I installed the handle, put the bins back in place, and finished it off. Now This pull out feature is a huge improvement over what we started with and it's such an easier way for the kids to use it too. So there's some videos over here on the screen. You can check out some of the other things I've done. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I'd love to have you as part of the team. You can do that right over here. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.